Good day Fred friends and um, we have a different camera angle today and uh, there's a reason for it um, you see behind me there's a Canada flag and I'm calling this video Canada Revisited uh, not because I'm in Canada because I'm not I'm still here in England but my wife is in Canada at the moment visiting her family my wife if you didn't know is Canadian uh, she came over here 10 years ago and after a couple of years we were married and uh, she lives in England now but she is still very much Canadian and um, while she's away uh, I'm celebrating Canada fortnight or Canada two and a half weeks should I say um, not just in remembrance of my wife because it's like she hasn't gone to leave I mean she's coming back obviously but because my wife is in Canada I love Canada um, I put a flag up to remind me of who she is where she's from and uh, that I love her and so there you go the Canada flag is up and that is staying so uh, this is Canada revisited and it's Canada revisited in more ways than one because on the bench today I have a Canadian guitar and it's one I had in very recently and it's a Garrison Garrison being a Canadian guitar company that no longer exists bought out by Fender well we do exist under the Fender moniker this came in and I gave it a fret level and it belongs to a brother in Christ, a worship team leader and a great musician in his own right, uh, Mr. James Mills, James Christopher Mills, good friend, uh, love him and um, if you remember this guitar, I don't know if you know, I might not mention it on the video, but I dropped it and not only did it have a, a fret level when I done it, it also had a neck glue or a neck fix because I cracked the neck in half. And um, that's held really well. And I did the fret level, blah, blah, blah. Reclined all the frets, got all the guitar set up, took it back to him, didn't charge him for the work I'd done because I broke the guitar, but it was absolutely fine about it. So scars are scars. It's good to show where we come from in the past and all that. Anyway, lo and behold, just to show that I'm not the only idiot on the planet or I'm not the only daft lad on the planet, James himself has gone and snapped the head stop. Let's have a look there. And it's a clean break. Held on by the veneer, just about. So hopefully I can get that glued up, blah, 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 blah. My brake is next to it, just a little bit lower, here. So I'm gonna fix it for him. So it is Canada Revisited. But I don't wanna break that veneer, that veneer is just about ready for breaking. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get some glue in there, and I'm gonna get clamped up. Now the hardest part of this job is clamping it up, because we're on an angle here. So what I need to do is get this all packed I want to try and get a clamp on it that way. So I'm going to get a block of wood under there and I'm going to clamp it right on this heel, this volume bit here. I'm going to get plenty of glue in there and I'm going to get clamped it. I'm not bothered at all about the cosmetics and neither is James. He says, look, if it glues and holds and it's playable, that's all that matters. Scars don't matter. But having the guitar working and playing is. So I'm going to crack on with that. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to really film anything because, um, camera's just going to get in the way. I'm going to get it glued up, clamped up, and uh, no matter what excess glue I get, squeeze, oh, squeeze out, get out there. I'm not wiping it off or anything. I'll clean it all off once the fix, once I'm happy with the fix. And uh, all being well, after that we can, I mean, again, another weak point right under the truss rod slot there is where we need to glue here. You could not get a weaker point on the guitar to have a break, but you know, let's hope we can get a good glue in there. Once that's done, I will come and glue the veneer with some super glue on the top. So let's see how we get on. Let's pray for a good clamp and a good fix. And we'll see how we are shortly. So a couple of things I just want to mention before I proceed with this. I have taped just a little bit of a, uh, what is it? kitchen towel blah blah whatever you call it around there just to catch any spill out I've taped up the back just to stop this flapping about because it's flapping about that much and it's going to snap across here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely ignore the state of this veneer at the top there and the finishing and it's not pretty and it might not be pretty once I've got it all glued but the most important thing is to get a good contact between the two surfaces when we glue this back together. When it comes to the top, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off right next to where the cracks are. Sorry, just over there. I'm going to tape off right around where the cracks are, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in super glue. 
and I'm going to make as neat a job as I can. But it is not about getting it neat, it is about getting it structurally um, sound. Uh, just so the guitar again is playable and usable. It's never going to win a beauty pageant this guitar, not anymore. But I know it's a beautiful sounding guitar. The most important thing about this guitar now is getting it playable and usable again. Regarding any of the areas, um, the cosmetics of it all, I will tidy up as best I can. But that is not the important thing. So I'm going to get it all clamped. Well, I'm going to get some glue out. I'm going to get it glued. I'm going to get clamped. I'm going to pray. And um, let's see where we are in an hour or two. So this will be the clamping method I will be using between where the nut is and this piece of wood. I have a piece of Teflon which glue will not stick to. So that we're not going to get any glue on the front. And at the back there I've got a piece of wood supporting with foam underneath and a good clamp right over the volume. This is going to give us a really, really good clamp. Let's just show you there and just show you around there. We're going to get a very, very good clamp in all areas. It's the best way to do it. Um, I am pretty. I will get that straightened up so it is right up and over all of the um, the uh, face of the headstock and I'm sure we're going to get a very very good bond there like I say cosmetically that is not important at the moment it's not important anyway I'm not going to be finishing the guitar but I'm going to get it as tidy as possible I think that way of clamping is really going to work it's a shame I'm on my own today it would have been good to have another pair of hands in here just to help me a little bit especially with the clamping but I'm sure I'm going to be okay Welcome back friends, I'm continuing with the Canada theme, in fact I'll be continuing with the Canada theme until my wife gets back from Canada. Now we have some good news regarding this guitar, uh, the headstock is glued back on. I don't know what you can see there, I'll turn it this way, and I'll turn it that way. And something I noticed, that there are two different colour woods here and here, and it has a strange kind of scarf joint but just on the headstock area. Now if I pause you there, you're going to see it there and it goes across the guitar and down this way here. So, this may well be two pieces of wood here, which means, even though this is probably the weakest area of the neck, I have no reason to believe that it will not stay strong and glued, uh, which will be a great thing. Um, but end of the day, it sticks or it doesn't, that stuck pretty well. Uh, the problem area now being the veneer on the top, which is sitting proud down here somewhere. I'll feel it with my fingers. There you go, right there and right there. And it's slightly sitting proud. Now, see if I can show you in this kind of area where it joins there. And I have the same in this area, even worse. I have to do it upside down, but it's more pronounced even here. So, what I've decided to do with this area is the wood itself is glued, the main stroke structure. The area which we have glued is the weakest area on the neck because it's where the truss rod cavity is right there. So you couldn't have broke this in a worse position really. Well you could have done you could have broke it right here and that would have been you'd have been more or less impossible unless you put steel rods inserted steel rods in there. But a very weak point but I imagine I, I should think that this is going to glue okay but what I need to do now is I want to fix this area. Now James knows that when it comes to cosmetics Cosmetics are not my thing. In fact, I don't do any kind of paying, painting or spraying here. Uh, what I normally do is if I get a break like this or a job like this in, I will repair the break and then I'll move the guitar on over to Clive Eastwood at Beaver Guitars and he will do all the finishing work. Um, he'll do all the respraying, touching up, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the good thing about that is uh, he does me a pretty good rate, you know, being a friend and all that. Um, but it may, still makes the job quite an expensive one. Uh, but what I'm going to do with this is I've decided I'm going to tape up this area and I'm going to drop super glue in there and where these cracks are um, and then I'm going to clamp. Now if I clamp and use super glue, the clamps are going to stick to the super glue. So I'm going to use between the clamps and my blocks of wood, I'm going to use strips of silicone. Now silicone glue does not stick to it. So I've got plenty of this, I've got sheets of it. So if I I'm going to glue there, I've got some silicone over the top, 
and, that, and, that, and then we should get at least I should get this pretty flush because this is I didn't really get I got a glue on the main part of the headstock but it didn't really seep right into where the um, veneer is on the top of the headstock there and I couldn't do that I had to just get the guitar structurally sound and that is the important thing it is about the structure and the strength of the structure of the guitar um, if we get this guitar functioning again I know for a fact James is not bothered about cosmetics this scars we, we have scars and this show is you know uh, having a scar shows you you've gone through a rough patch somewhere in your life so that's fine that also equates to this guitar but if we can get the guitar solid and working again that is all that matters so that is what I'm going to do I'm not really going to film it um, I'm you know this is going to be a week I'm, I'm not on a working week this is uh, this is just now a project it's not a job um, and I'm, I'm having time off at the moment um, so I'm doing this really in my spare time so let me crack on with it I'll see how we go. We'll um, keep this guitar in your prayers. Let's pray that we get a good fix on this uh, on the headstock, on the top of the headstock, so we can get it looking at least pretty good, and um, that we get it all working. And that is that. Back soon. Well, I'm actually quite pleased with how that has come out. Apart from the fact that uh, something I should have foresaw, I have stuck the tape to the headstock or some of the tape. Ba -ba 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 like so but you know what I'm not worried about that because I have got a very good bond on the veneer and on the edges where the binding is and we've got plenty of glue or plenty of super glue in there and it's not perfect and I knew it wouldn't look perfect but we have got a good bond in there and I'm really pleased with that now what remains for me to do is to soak this in some kind of mild solvent uh, and to go and scrape off this tape, which is exactly what I'm going to do. My scraping technique, I'm going to use a uh, Stanley blade, like so, and I will get some masking tape and play it, put a layer of masking tape over both sides. So I'll just leave an exposed centre bit for scraping, and the masking tape will give me a an nth of a millimetre clearance, which means I won't cut into the lacquer but I will be able to remove the tape uh, by that. I think that probably is better just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, those of you who are in the game you know all about this trick. We'll take some masking tape and we'll just tape over that, cut in through like so. And again, like so here. And we have now an exposed area, but these areas are not going to touch the guitar, so we're going to scrape using that as it is. And that is going to work. It's going to be a little bit, it's not going to be uber easy, but it's not going to be uber difficult either. But we're going to remove that tape. I'll come back, let you see how that went. Like I say, it's not going to be perfect, but structurally, the guitar is going to be sound. I do apologise if the camera angle has changed from before. It's very difficult to set a tripod and keep resetting it every time you want to move it. But I want to get the Canada flag in because my wife's Canadian. I love Canada and we hopefully one day will settle in Canada. In fact, no hopefully about it, we'll all settle in Canada. So, where are we with this guitar? Well, remarkably, uh, I have put James's strings on there. They're a big, fat, stupid gauge. I think it's something like 1356s, could be 1254s. I've stretched them in. And I have a guitar strung up to pitch, and I've had it strung up to pitch a while, and it's stayed in tune. It's not gone out of tune, and it plays fine. <laughs> There's a little bit more tune, and it's not exactly bang in tune. Um, am I pleased with it? I'm very pleased with it. I know cosmetically it is quite cosmetically challenged. You want to have a quick zoom in on the headstock and around these areas, around these tuners where the veneer cracked. But we have the headstock glued back on. I'll show you this place upside down because I'm not turning the camera around. And we've got a good bond with the glue and the guitar stays in tune and it looks like a guitar from more than a foot or so away, you wouldn't know. I can tell that a hairline cracks 
down there, so especially on this side, that you can see now. I wasn't going to do, going to do anything on the finishing anyway. I could sand that flatter, make it a bit better. Also, a bit on here where the veneer does not exactly line up. But the guitar structurally seems sound. We could completely fix this properly. We could sand off the lacquer, refinish this, we could sand it all back down, and we could basically grain fill the whole neck again, then spray it over and um, you know make everything invisible. But that would be expensive, it's not something I can do. I could send it over to uh, Clive Eastwood at Beaver Guitars and he could do it. But main objective has been achieved. We have made the guitar playable again and it's fixed and it's usable. So what I recommend to James is don't knock it over again mate. Please don't knock it over again because I don't know how many more fixes I can do on this. So that is it. Uh, project is done. Um, and it works. What more can I say? So that is it. Until the next time boys and girls and I'm sure the next project will be a Canada pro might not be a Canada guitar but It'll be during Canada two and a half weeks because uh, I'm, I'm not even a week into that yet. So, project finished. Check me out at fretfriend.co.uk. Even better, facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-1-7. I'm Victor Christian. I'm Fret Friend, And I'm signing off. So, as always, kids, be good to each other. And I'll see you soon.